Hi guys, I think Victoria Derbyshire is probably one of, if not the best, journalists the BBC have. She will not let government ministers or MPs get away with stupid responses or allow them to disconnect themselves from the policies of their parties. She held Immigration Minister and General Horrible Individual Robert Jenrick to account here. Remember him, the guy who ordered the painting over of murals of cartoon characters at a detention centre. The guy who claimed that migrants were attempting to, and I quote, cannibalise Britain. And also said that the immigration debate was dominated by humanitarian nimbyism. Well, Victoria didn't let him off the hook when he claimed that processing claims would not fix the backlog. When pushed for evidence, he tried to become the interviewer. Insane stuff. Have a listen. The backlog has happened on your watch. You've been in power for 13 years. It's costing eight million a day, taxpayers' money. You're responsible. Well, since I became immigration minister, we've made but great your, progress. Your, your well, party well, you has been for, You asked for uh, I'm asking my you, own I, record on this. No, no, I didn't. I, I, I said, what, 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 I, no, I asked the about the Conservatives' record since 2010. Well, 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 the me, backlog was less what, than 20,000 in 2010. No, it's that, ne that's not... That's... The, the, that is true. It was less than 20,000 in 2010 and is now around 170,000. The backlog has risen significantly over the last 13 years. Why are you pretending that previous Conservative governments are nothing to do with you. No, I'm not. I'm telling you what my own record is and that of Rishi Sunak. We came no, you do this all the time. Notice that at the beginning of this, he was talking over her. Instead of actually listening to the question, he started responding and trying to speak over her. So what, what is the point of that? Anyway, Notice how the Conservatives will, when they're talking about the Labour Party, will say, look, we, over the last 13 years, we've been picking up the pieces of the disaster left behind by the Labour Party. But when it comes to immigration, he's like, no, 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 ignore the last 13 years. Because sometimes they'll, as I said, will say, well, we need to focus on the last 13 years. Therese Coffey was claiming that the quality of water when Labour were in power was a disaster <laughs> and that they have been cleaning up after that. A complete and utter lie. But Robert Jenrick was clearly asked about the last 13 years of Tory rule. And then he was like, well, you asked me about when I was in power, when I became minister. No, it was about 13 years. It's always about trying to deflect from 13 years of terrible rule and focus on just the last bit. Or um, trying to convince people to remember the, the bad old days when Labour were in power. Came in. Uh, to sort out this problem, and we're making good progress. I think that's important to note. Not but, according to the Home Affairs Select Committee this summer, who said the rise in the number of applications is down to the slow processing of applications. It's having a bigger impact on the backlog than the increase in applications themselves. Fundamental question here is... No, the fundamental you, you question is... Do you process claims quickly, you'll stop people coming, coming across on small boats? I don't think that's right. Based on I, what? Because I don't think that just having a system where you wave people into this country is an efficient way to manage your borders. Sorry, so you just don't think that or you've got some evidence that that is the case? I, I, I do not believe. You're, you're arguing, I think. You're arguing. Wait, wait a minute. You were asked for evidence. You claimed that the Home Affairs Select Committee has said that if you process claims, you will reduce the backlog. That sounds logical. And he's saying, no, that's not true. And he was asked, why do, you, why do you think that's not true? And he said, well, I believe. Well, do you have evidence to counter the Home Affairs Select Committee? And he says, um, okay, let me be the interview for a, interviewer for a moment. This is insane. You are the government minister. You have to be held to account. But if you're claiming something, then you have to present evidence. He presented no evidence. When... Victoria mentioned at the beginning of the interview about how, well, when the Labour Party were in power, it was about 20,000. The backlog was about 20,000. And he said, that's not, he was about to say that's not true. But if he said that's not true, then he'd have to present evidence to the counter. But he has no evidence. He has no evidence to counter the claim that the backlog was 20,000 in 2010. And he has no evidence to claim, to, to back the claim that, um, not reducing the backlog will <laughs> reduce the number of people in hotels waiting for their claim to be processed. And his reaction is, let me interview you for a moment. Ridiculous.
think that no, the I'm sole... I'm asking you for the evidence. You, well, I think your argument is, and this is the Labour Party's position as I'm well... I'm asking you that for the evidence. ...the sole way to protect our borders is to have an incredibly efficient system that waves people in, process... It does not wave people in, it processes claims. Waving people in. Does he... Is he really that stupid? Or is he just pretending to be stupid? This is my fundamental question to most Tory MPs and Tory ministers. Are they stupid or are they pretending to be? Because people are not waved through. They are processed. If their claim is processed and they're successful, they move on to refugee status. If they're not, they are deported. That's how normal countries operate. Robert Jenrick's country seems to, well, we just let people, let people in because you can't stop the boats. And then we don't process the claims. And then the hotels fill up and it costs £8 million a day. Isn't it interesting that the Conservatives are not paying this out of their own pocket? They're not having a whip round. Imagine how the situation would be different. Do you think they would allow hotels to fill up with asylum seekers if, they had, if the Tory party had to pay for this? No, it's taxpayers' money. It's not our money. We don't give a crap. We're happy to waste taxpayer money because it's not us reaching into our pocket or asking our donors to help us out here. ...processes their claims quickly and enables them to get then on with you, their life in the UK. But then you wouldn't have people lounging around that that in hotels on benefits costing taxpayers £8 million a day. Well, I don't think we should have people in hotels and I expect us to be closing hotels very soon. How? How? Your, your answer to, well, let's bring down the number of people in hotels is by telling people not to come here by rubber boat. That's it. Uh, we'll, we'll tell them we're going to send you to Rwanda. But two problems with this. Of course, Rwanda's not working. But also, how do you communicate this information to people who are in Eritrea, who want to come to Britain? People are even in Calais at the moment. They're, they're not listening to the radio. They're not watching the BBC. They're not listening to Suella Braveman or Rishi Sunak or Robert Jenrick and going, oh, Robert Jenrick said that he doesn't want us coming here. Then let's stay here in Calais. <laughs> it's like, it's, do, do they actually believe this? We have to create this deterrent. The baby Stockholm. Okay, well, we can't use the baby Stockholm. Okay, we're going to create this deterrent of Rwanda. Um, <laughs> uh, Suella Braveman has been in Rwanda more than any asylum seeker has. Soon. <sighs> but, I fun them but I do. Let me ask a question because I, f I feel like you may be talking out the time. It's true, isn't it? No, he's always talking over the interviewer. That you've no idea if the Rwanda scheme, if it gets up and running, would put people off coming. There is no evidence that it would have a deterrent effect. Well, we have the uh, evidence from Australia. Of course, it's a novel. Home... <sighs> Australia is not Britain. Australia is a completely different situation. Australia has agreements with countries. And the numbers coming it were, that were coming into Australia are tiny compared to the numbers coming into Britain. So you can't use Australia as an example. But if you want to use Australia, then the, if you're copying Australia, then why isn't it working? You're saying, well, the Australian one worked and we're copying the Australian one, but yours isn't working. Why? Well, we need to be more like Australia. But at what stage will you realise it's not working? No, he, he realises it's not working. At what stage will you be honest and say, actually, it's not working? They'll never say it. They have yet to say, actually, we have failed. Rishi Sunak would have stopped the boats. He said he would stop the boats by the end of the year. The numbers are increasing. At what stage will Rishi Sunak turn around and say, I'm sorry, uh, I messed up. I, I said I stopped the boats and I won't stop the boats. At what stage will Robert Jenrick say, actually, we failed. Rwanda is a failure. Or the baby Stockholm was a failure. They won't. They'll just double down. Or they'll blame somebody else. Blame the Labour Party and Keir Starmer, who isn't in power, who doesn't have a majority. They'll blame lefty lawyers who are doing their job. They'll blame the EU, probably, or blame the asylum seekers themselves. It's always about somebody else. We have failed, but it's not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. And for that reason, they need to be kicked out at the next general election. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.